Many years ago, I felt a call to go into ministry. Now, it wasn't some huge cataclysmic event or experience. It was more like a very long walk and a conversation that took place over several years. But it was a call. I have no doubt about that. I was called to go into ministry because I cared about God's people. I cared about God's creation. I cared about justice and equality. I was called to go into ministry because most of my really significant moments, as I look back over that part of my life, most of my really significant moments and conversations had been centered around church and issues of faith and following Jesus. My call has been lived out in the relationships that I've had, the conversations I've had with all sorts of people. And some of you have been involved with some very deep conversations together. In the Gospel of Matthew, when Jesus calls his first four disciples, he tells them that he's going to change them from fishermen into fishers of people, people. In a very real way, Jesus is calling these first disciples not into work, but into relationship. Relationship with God, yes. Of course, with Jesus, yes. But just as importantly, He's calling them into relationship with people perhaps they've known for years and with people they have yet to meet. He's calling them into relationship. When I grappled with my call to ministry, nobody laughed. I knew that I was pretty lousy at administrative work. I failed to keep my office organized and tidy. I know, I know. It looks like a hurricane joined a tornado and then an earthquake, and it hit my office. And I really bombed it, you know, some of the, uh, knowing all the special seasons and what they're about, the dates and the liturgical year. But when it came to relating to others and wanting to relate to others and talking to others about life and its meaning, I excelled. Or at least I was much better at it than I was at those other things, huh? So for me, it's heartening to hear Jesus calling those first disciples not into administrative work or keeping their office in ship shape or even ahead for keeping all those special days and seasons of the Jewish calendar clearly in their heads. He called them into relationship with people. Now on top of that, think about all the wonderful teachings of Jesus. And believe it or not, you will find very little teaching on the importance of office work and administration. Huh? What you do find is really kind of a master class in human relationships, how we relate to one another. You find a way of living taught by Jesus that takes others into consideration. In fact, he challenges us to put others first to care for the weakest amongst us, to give our lives in service and in relationship with our fellow travelers on this journey called life. Now, you have to ask yourself at the hearing of the gospel, why would those four men who were fishing in the Sea of Galilee suddenly drop their nets, leave their boats, and in the case of James and John, leave their father behind in order to follow this itinerant rabbi. That had to be a powerful call. What sort of a call can do that? What kind of a call can turn someone around and head them in a completely new direction in life? I think it is a call to a life of meaning and purpose and relationship. It calls, takes a person who is growing tired of every day being the same You know, get up at first light, launch the boats, catch some fish, take them to market, go home exhausted, go to sleep, 
get up at first light, launch the boat, catch some fish, you get the picture. When you've gotten to the point in your life when you start to ask the question, is this all there is? The call to a life of meaning, purpose, and relationship is very enticing. It's what you've been looking for, but you didn't know how to find. It's an invitation to an unknown future, a future where no two days are going to be alike, each day bringing a new adventure, a new challenge, a new opportunity to engage others in the conversation of meaning and life and relationship and faith. That's what Jesus is offering these four fellows who jumped at the chance. That's what I think Jesus offered me those many years ago when I jumped at the chance. And that's what Jesus is offering you. Your call is just as important as my call. Our call is just as important as the disciples' call. We are called into relationship with God. And that relationship leads us to a new and deeper relationship with the people in this room, the people in your life, the people beyond our borders, the people at our borders, people of different languages, different traditions, different faiths. This call that we all have received is not to be taken lightly, but it is an offer to take us in a whole, to, to a whole other level of living. It's no wonder that Peter and Andrew, James and John left immediately their workaday lives and never looked back. Those disciples weren't superheroes. They were ordinary people just like us. So we shouldn't be surprised when Jesus issues that very same call to us. To be in genuine and real relationships with the people around us and to be This is key, to be in those relationships just like Jesus was in relationships. Bearing each other's burdens, caring for each other, and especially the vulnerable. Holding on to each other in the thick and thin of life, always with the hope and promise of God's abundant grace. Sometimes that call, and let's put it this way, the call to be in Christ-shaped relationships with others, sometimes that call takes people far from home. And sometimes it just takes us right here with the people around us. But it always involves people. Not simply a mission or a ministry or a movement, but actual flesh and blood people. Now, I'm going to challenge you a bit. In order to let that sink in just a bit, I want you to do something for me. Right now, call to mind one person with whom you have a relationship. It could be a friendship, an acquaintance, a relative, but use the first person that comes to mind. And it might be a relationship that brings you joy or sorrow or frustration or hope. It doesn't really matter, just as long as it is a significant relationship, someone you know. Got him? Now let's take a moment to offer just a short prayer for that person. And in that prayer to believe that God is calling us, calling you, using you to make a real difference in that person's life. Maybe not a huge difference, but a difference. Pray for them. When you're ready, think back over some of the other people who have come into your life. Because it's not that Jesus is just now calling us to be fishers of people, but that Jesus has been calling us, and God has already been using us to care for all those people that God loves. We had, as many of you were here, we had a cast meeting, which is coffee and sandwich teams downtown, a cast meeting here in the sanctuary on Tuesday night, people from many different faith organizations. 
And some of us have felt a call to be a part of that program to feed and care for some of God's most vulnerable children. Even going downtown with coffee and sandwiches is about relationships. I asked Greg's permission to do this, but I want to share something that our own Greg Heine wrote that is included in the new cast brochure. Dave had lived on the street for a while when I met him. He came every night to dinner. It took us a while to hit it off, but I saw that he always had earbuds and a radio. One night I asked him what he was listening to. Come to find out, he was a rabid Mariners fan. I was also a fan. So we talked whenever we saw each other and we became friends. I found that Dave was someone that really wanted to work at any job he could get, even though he had physical limitations. Every night after we were done, he took it upon himself to clean up the area of all the garbage and wipe down the tables, all to show his appreciation for what we do for him and others. David always talked about getting a place to live, but the list, as you know, is long and not everyone could help him at the right time. And one night when I hadn't seen Dave for a couple of months, I asked if anyone else had seen him. And I was thrilled to hear that he had gotten a place to live and now had funds to feed himself. I was so happy for Dave, but I missed his smile and our conversation. About three months ago, Dave came back. He said that he missed the people he spoke to and the camaraderie. Dave doesn't come all the time now, but he is a part of our community and continues to be a light to us and to the other friends that he's made. I know that Greg was called into developing caring relationships with people around him, people like Dave. And I know that I've been called to do the same thing. And I know that you have been called to do the same thing. Those men jumped at the chance to have a life filled with conversations and caring. Jesus calls us to give ourselves in relationships of love and grace. So, leave your nets, leave your worries, leave your burdens behind, and let's follow. Amen?